Sports Sportsfans, PBZ Sports Chaos. And you know what, PB? It's St. Patrick's Day. It's the second day of March Madness. And it's a Friday. That's a trifecta, you know what? And what do Let's you got? Go. You got some JMO? You got some got Guinness? Some Jameson going. I got some Guinness in, in the PBZ Sports Chaos mug. Oh, I like it. Obviously, going all out. By the way, I have my Guinness in an official Guinness glass. Oh, I got mine in an official PB and Z glass. Uh, that's pretty good too. That's pretty good. We have to take that to Ireland one day and do a show. And I got my JMO as well. I got Jamison Black. I happen to like black, as you know. Black is good for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, side, yeah, joke. Very... side joke for you fans that don't know the story behind that. <laughs> very, very true. Very true. Let's go. All right. Hey. Final four, we're going to talk a little bit. I mean, a final four, we're going to talk March Madness. We'll actually talk about our finals picks in a minute. Plus, we get the NFL hot stove. I mean, the NFL right now perhaps has surpassed MLB as far as offseason talk. It used to be MLB was talked about all year round. No longer, it's NFL, right? It is. It is from the, from the, Minute the Super Bowl ends, I feel like it's just complete chaos. And people between coaches getting fired, right? And then you had the whole coaching carousel happens in those first few weeks. Then you have the franchise tags, then the the combine, and then the yeah. free agency. It's it's insane. It's great. I will I will give you it goes back one week further. It goes to the off week. The off week of the Super Bowl. Between yeah. Tweeting up championships in the Super Bowl, right? Right. I mean, it's it's just a nonstop. It's a year long event now, which we hey, love. Well, Real quick, before we have this discussion, the Bruins still continue to remain on a hot pace. They're not on the points record. They're off by two points. But but they're on the wins record, so they have to win one more game. They'll have the points record, right? Yeah, yeah. They did lose three out of four in a little stretch there. That was tough. But they came back with a nice win last night against Winnipeg. So that was nice to see. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, uh, speaking of MLB uh, and baseball, are you watching any of the WBC no, I should probably, but you know, obviously it's big down here in Florida with the, the Puerto Rican team and the Dominican team and every you know, there are there a lot of people are posting that normally don't follow baseball. I should be a little bit more into it, but unfortunately I'm not. I'm too I'm too wrapped up in this this tournament now and hockey and and the football offseason and all that. I will say this the one thing about the WBC is it it's a risk to MLB players, and sure enough. Edwin Diaz, the close from the Mets, who just got the biggest contract ever for a closer this past offseason. He, in the celebration, he throws uh, three strikeouts, I believe it was, to close the game out. They celebrate the win. He tears his knees out for the year, right? I mean, just uh, sad for him. He's a good guy. I know like, he's the guy that plays the trumpets at the Mets games, right? Yeah, 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 but yeah. Well, he doesn't play the trumpet, but they play the trumpet for him when he comes yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. That's right. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Let's talk this uh, Moss Madness stuff because yesterday was a pretty good uh, first day of the, uh, the um, round of 64. You had a huge upset. Number 15, Herman. Princeton. Oh, number Princeton 15, too. Princeton beats number two, Arizona. A little fact about that, PB. Arizona is now the first team ever to lose twice as a fifth as a two versus a 15. First team time ever. Wow. Wow. That's and then the other one you were about to mention, Virginia as a four loses to Berman. Berman. Yes. Right? By the way, here's the history of that one. Five years ago to the very day, Virginia lost to UN BC, I believe it was, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. As a number one seed, the only time ever to lose to a 16 seed. Wow. Yeah, there's some big upsets yesterday. Fun to I watch. I haven't seen yet today, but has there been any upsets yet today? Uh, no, there was a couple of close ones, but the, the the higher seeds prevailed for the most part today. All so. Right, so it's gone to chalk. All right, which means I, I might have lost the game because I think today was the day I picked a couple upsets. I didn't yesterday. All right, let's talk about our picks because we're supposed to be experts, right? Yeah. Who do you got in your Elite Eight? Yeah. So, by the way, if you haven't already, you can still join our league. As long as you put your bracket in on time oh, on, yeah, e yeah. on ESPN, you can still go in and find our group and enter your bracket into our group. So, if you want to do that, by all means, go ahead. And um, I'll tell you what, if you do that and you win, we're going to ship you one of those nice mugs that PB has there right there. Show them in the mug. Yeah. 
We can't see it from the phone, but yeah, it's got PB and Z on there. Um, right. And the other thing we're all trying to do is we're trying to dethrone Christelle. Christelle, unfortunately, has been a thorn in everybody's side. She's won our, every, I think every year we've done this, which has been for three years, she's won every single time. So this is her fourth year. And last year, it was between me and her and in the final four, and she had to have one, both teams win and her final win. And I had to have them all lose in order for her to win. And that happened. So I couldn't dethrone her last year. We got to try and do it this year, man. I mean, it's we can't give her four in a row. By the way, uh, I heard Christelle actually gets a sports consultant to help her. She pays $5,000 every betting season to help her out with these bets. And, all right. And, all for, good for her. Good for her. So for me, um, in, in my, my big bracket that I consider the one that I'm like most vested in, I have uh, Houston winning it all. Um, and in my final four, I have, well, I actually want to start with the final eight, right? Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the final eight, I have. The elite, the elite eight. Yeah, the elite eight. I already have one limited. I have Bama and Zona. I got Houston and Iowa State, Purdue and Tennessee, and St. Mary's and UCLA. And then I have a Bama, Purdue, Houston, UCLA final four with a Houston Bama finals and Houston winning it all. I I did add the three brackets, so I got some other teams, um, you know, throughout that are that are also in the final four and finals that we can talk about after you give me yours. So zone is out. And by the way, did did um did you um St. Mary's did they win today? Do you know? Um, they were up by eight or so when I came. They're on right now. All right, so that that's my upset pick. I had I had ECU winning that game. Yeah. Yep. I, I got I got Bammer Zona, so I got Zona out like you. Zona's gone. I got Duke Marquette. I got Houston, Texas. I got Kansas and Gonzaga. And right now, I got to tell you, I'm very worried about two teams. Bama, because Brandon Miller pulled his groin yesterday. He didn't play the second half. Houston, Marcus Sazer, their star player, who hit injured his uh, groin earlier in this, uh, like in the, in the conference playoffs. He re-injured it again yesterday. He didn't play at all either in the second half. So I'm concerned that both those teams could be in trouble because the two star players are out. Yeah, that's a good point. And and I have some of those teams too. So you went to three brackets as I did. And some of the other teams that I have getting down into this Elite Eight, I got Baylor in the Elite Eight. I got Xavier in the Elite Eight. I got Marquette in the Elite Eight. I got Michigan State in the Elite Eight. I have Kansas like you in the Elite Eight and Zaga. So I got some of those other teams that you had mentioned also sitting there in the Elite Eight. My final four, I actually have um, I have Baylor and Michigan State and Houston and Zaga in, mo- in one of my other brackets, which I think is a good, pretty good mix of teams there for a final four. Um, I also got Bama and Marquette and Houston and Kansas in one of my other final fours. So, okay. I you know, I, I obviously played some odds and put some different teams in there to give myself a chance, but that's why you – Make three brackets, you know. I will say this: I, Bama, Duke, and Texas Gonzaga. That's my prime. I, I do have another one where I have UCLA mixed in with somebody, uh, and Houston as well. But I think right now, given the injuries with Houston and uh, Bama, I'm concerned. But I, I didn't have them subbed out. I have them all the way. Um, but I think Bama, Duke, Texas, and Gonzaga right now are looking stronger and stronger at this moment. D- right now, Duke. Duke concerns me. I mean, I never thought as a five seed, these guys look like the one of the better teams. I've heard a few experts talk about it because they're heightening their length, as they say. Yeah. Well, last year they made it into the final four. Uh, final, wait, the final four, right? As a what? What seed were they last year? Were they? Uh, well, they weren't they were high. Higher seed. They were a higher seed. They were higher than they are this year, but they weren't like a one or a two. No, but the team that was a surprise last year was North Carolina, who was, I think was a sixth. They, they were an eight. They were an eight. They were eight. went to the finals, yeah. right? Yeah. And they didn't even make it this year. So we'll see. Yeah. But I, I, to me right now, if, if I, the injury with Brandon Miller concerns me because otherwise I think it's a Bama-Texas final. Bama-Texas, huh? Yeah. I, I will say this. The, the team that I would like to see – Replacing Texas is, is Gonzaga. And I think not being the number one or number two for the first time in a long, long time for them, there's no pressure on them. Drew Timmy 
stayed all four years, that he might be in a prime position to win this thing. Yeah. All right. All right. I like that. I like that. We'll see what happens. A lot. There's been a lot of upsets throughout the years. A lot of upsets yesterday. We'll see what happens today. There's some. There's some teams playing tonight that could upset some teams. So we'll see. I'm looking forward to Providence and Kentucky. I love Kentucky, but Providence being a local team, we'll see what what happens yeah. there. Seven o'clock game for that. Seven ten tip off for that one. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk a little NFL. A lot of stuff happened this past week. PB, we Ooh. had free agency. We had uh, before that we had tags. Only what I think eight guys got tagged. Six of them were running backs. One of them happened to be a guy named uh, Lamar Jackson. Got a non-exclusive, which we talked about. What did you say? What was your prediction on that? I will. Yeah, I, I said they'll probably go non-exclusive. I think you thought there was a lot of reason to do an exclusive tag, but I just was – they don't do – the NFL just doesn't do it. NFL teams yeah. don't do that that often. So – because they want to see what the market is, and yeah. that's what that allows to happen. So um, we'll see. And by I, the way, by the way, it's working out for the Ravens. No one's made an offer to him, I guess, right? Well, that was what I was going to say. Has he gotten phone calls? Where Where is this at right now? Because – if he's not getting offers from any other team, you know what that means. Baltimore can sign him for next to nothing. For no, you have, to honor, you have to honor the non exclusive dollar amount. Right. Well, right. Which is the um, which is like the average of the top five or something. 30, it comes 30, 32, 32 and a half million. 32 and a half. Okay. Which which you could make an argument is next to nothing, consider the quarterback the quarterback play right now and the contracts yeah. people signing. That's that's nothing compared to Deshaun Watson's contract. Is Deshaun is is Lamar a better quarterback than Deshaun? I would say probably yeah. But, uh, yeah absolutely, without a doubt. Right, but he's not getting Deshaun money. You Deshaun know what I mean? Like, an outlier. It's an outlier, and 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 the NFL teams know it. And unfortunately, they're now doing what MLB was accused of doing about maybe twenty years ago. We remember this called collusion, right? And they're colluding to now say no one's going to pay Lamar more than. They're not going to give him what what Deshaun's yeah. getting. No, no quarterback getting Deshaun's money ever again. Yeah, right. I agree with that. And and Lamar hurt himself. I think Lamar should have freaking manned up and played in the playoffs last year. If he had done that, I think teams would look at him and he has a gutsy guy who's trying to play. Look at Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy came back in and tried to finish a game when he had a torn UCL. Right, like, right. That's, that's the kind of stuff people want to see. Like gut, you know. And he didn't have that. He he wimped out. And he and he and he and he took the ball, and the team obviously got eliminated in the first round, even though they they played tough. But that's not what NFL teams want owners want to see. No, you know you're probably right. I mean, I think this is a spectacular. Is he a great thrower? No, he's not the best thrower. He's a spectacular talent. And the NFL today, where most teams don't have five great offensive linemen, that makes it the difference. You know, if you have only three good offensive linemen. A great quarterback with mobility like him makes up the delta. So yeah. we'll see. I, I mean, who, the market's very shallow. Who's the only other bidders could be who? Commanders and I don't know Charlotte, but Charlotte already they got a they got a top five they got a top ten draft picks right. They're gonna get yeah. a shot at one of the four quarterbacks right. Yep, for sure. And they just signed uh, who? Charlotte just took on. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Who did? Charlotte, the Panthers. Oh, uh, Carolina. Carolina. Oh, Charlotte, Carolina. They, they, they signed Andy Dalton. Yeah, yeah. So they already have a guy that can do all right for them, but if they don't get one of the four top. And the commanders who are, are outside of the top four, that's the only other team. And they're not making a bid for them. But, but you know Carolina's getting – they traded up to number one. So yeah. they they, so they, they, they – so the you're, you're right. So only other team is commanders, right? Yeah, so they have a guy in their mind. I don't know who that guy is. I'm guessing it's Bryce Young, but I don't know for sure. And we'll see when the draft. Well, happens. let's talk about that for a second. I mean, Bryce Young did not compete at the, at the combine. He's only doing his pro day at the end of this month. The guy that came out of you know he wasn't going to come out of nowhere, but he shined Richardson. like everybody's waiting for. Was Anthony Richardson, right? Right. But did he do enough to move up and be convincing to be the number one draft pick overall? I don't know. I mean. I, I, I don't think it's C.J. Stroud. I don't think it's Will Levis, although maybe it is Will Levis. I don't know. I, I, I'm i I'm thinking it's Bryce Young, but I could be wrong. I will say this. Tua is the beacon for uh, Bryce Young. 
because two is a little more physical than Bryce, and look how two is looking right now, right? I know. And it's top. It's top to be non-durable as a quarterback. Look at the quarterbacks that are successful right now. Look at guys like Josh Allen, right? Six five, right? Yeah, look at, yeah. Look at Justin Herbert. Look at look at Joe Burrow, right? Look at guys like when, when Cam Newton was playing in his prime. You you need to have a big body to be in the NFL these days, and right? Even if you're a shorter guy like Kyler Mur uh, Murray, who's much more physical than Bryce Young, even he was hurt this year, right? Yeah. So, I, I I don't see Bryce Young. I I mean, if Carolina goes for Bryce Young, good luck to them. At the end of the day. By the way. Chicago traded down, and Jalen Carter, who has all these problems right now, and he, he stunk in his pro day the other day. He had to quit the drills. Yeah, yeah. I. But, WTF. But, but let's talk about what Chicago did because you and I predicted that. You yeah. asked me what they should do at, with their number one pick, and I said get rid of it. Right. Oh, get rid yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Start to build around Fields. I think Fields showed us enough last year that he he can be the guy. Right. And now they all of a sudden insert DJ Moore, right? Yeah. And and they get the number eight pick overall. So they should be able to pick up a prime receiver, right? They should be able to get the likes of a uh, I don't know if Smith and Jim and Jimba will still be around at eight. Well, let me let me ask you a question real quick on that. Do you think there's any receiver that's worthy of the eighth spot in this draft? Yeah, oh yeah. Smith and Jimba for sure. Okay. All right. have to think, would be number eight. Okay. Other than that, it would be a risk. If you go for a Zay Flowers or a Quentin Johnson or something like that at eight, I think that's a little high. But um, yeah, I think they're they obviously traded away Montgomery or released Montgomery, right? And and he got picked up by um the Lions. Uh they recently signed Deontay Foreman. Chicago did. Yeah, they, yeah. That's a that's a good move. He's a good running back. He's I a like good running back. And you got Khalil Herbert. Who had flashes of brilliance, especially when Montgomery was out. If yep. he can come over and be the number one, and then Foreman comes in and, and plays some downs as well, this team could have a good. They could have a sneaky good offense. And let's look at that division too. Let's not forget Minnesota. Eh, they're not doing so good in the off season right now, right? I know they got some big weapons with Jefferson and Cook, but they're not doing so well in the off season. Um, Green Bay at Rogers gone. They could very easily finish last in that division, right? They could. And, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. You're not far apart. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right money. So you got the Lions. The Lions and the Bears could be fighting for this division next year. Are you surprised the Lions let Jamal Charles leave? Jamal Williams. Uh, Jamal, um, I'm sorry, Jamal yeah, Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he led the league in touchdowns, right? Russian yeah. touchdowns. But they picked up Montgomery, who's that short yardage guy, too, that they can give the ball to. I don't I know. Not, I know you're a Montgomery. I'm not a Montgomery fan. I'm just not. Yeah, he's not flashy, but he no, he, that's what it is, I guess. But he runs up and down. I mean, he runs north and south. He's I, I don't know. I like him. I, I think he's let, a. Let me ask you a question. The other big thing was the Eagles. They lost a couple of really like I think four starters on the defense, right? Well, but but they recently released their who was their star safety or corner or whatever that they um Bradbury and they resigned him. And they resigned him. So that was at least a, but a they win. lost the defensive lineman. I forget his name right now. They went to KC. They, KC paid a bundle of money for him, right? The D, D tackle. And they lost a couple other guys. So they, yep. they're down four defensive players right now. Not to mention coaching staff, right? So and yes, two coordinators. Yeah. yeah. For so, a team that lost the Super Bowl, I, that blows my mind. Right. So this team, this is a team that very well could miss the playoff. They could have that Super Bowl hangover, miss the playoffs the following year. I wouldn't be surprised if they struggle to either, either make a wild card or don't or miss the playoffs altogether next year. What do you think about uh, Danny Dimes to the Saints? I mean, not Danny, Derek Carr. Derek Carr to the Saints. Derek Carr. So we, we we need to talk about Giants too. But yeah, I, I like oh. Derek Carr to the Saints. I like that move. I they got some good move for him. I, I agree with you. If Michael Thompson and Alva Kamara can be healthy all year long, he's a pretty good quarter. He's not a, he's not an elite quarterback, but he's right. he's in the top third in the league. And let's look at and Chris Olave. He he could be a big. Oh, I forgot about. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So that that could be an interesting offense next year as well. And again, we're talking about a division. Pretty much the whole NFC sucks. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, the whole NFC. But we're talking about another division. Tampa, eh, Carolina. We got to see what they do with, with their drafting of their quarterback. And Atlanta, 
we still don't know what they're going to do. If Desmond Ritter is going to be the guy or if, if they to trade it for Tyler Haneke, Tyler Haneke, if he's going to be the guy. So, yeah, the Saints very well could win that division. There's not a lot of competition. No, there isn't. No, I'm with you on that one. All right. So the question of the day is um, Danny Dimes. We just mentioned it. Did the Giants they, overpay? He got his money. He got his money. Um, they overpaid for him, yes, in today's market. But it is a four-year deal. And if he stays the course and does what he does, this makes the playoffs consistently, and you look at him in three or four years, he will be p- being paid under market value. So it's it's a risk there a little bit. Um, but I, I love his his ability to run the football. I mean, this is a guy who was in the yeah, top. Yeah. I think he was in the top twenty five in the NFL in rushing last year, including running backs. Um, I'm just not sold on him. I don't think they can win a division title with him as a quarterback. Yeah, it, I probably agree with you. I probably agree with you there. Will they will they put people in seats though, and 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 make money as a franchise being in New York and make the playoffs and get people excited, which. Let's face it, the Giants haven't been able to do for quite a while now. No, they're pathetic. I think they're trying to make that leap to being relevant. They'll be relevant now in the NFL. They're the team to me that'll give Dallas a run for the division title before Philly. Oh, oh, oh. So you say Dallas wins it, Giants are second, and both of them leapfrog Philly. Yeah. Oh, oh, we got a big one here. PB says... Philly is in the toilet next year, fans. I, I do. Oh. I think I think they're gonna have a Super Bowl hangover. But, but I tell you, oh, okay. what else do the Giants do? They tag Saquon, so they're gonna keep Saquon for ten Probably. million. That's a lot. Probably. And then and then they also got Darren Waller. And if he can stay healthy, he's a beast of a tight end. I so, am surprised about that move. I'm very surprised about that move. As much as I'm surprised that the Pats didn't sign Jacoby. And then they signed Juju for the same money. Now, I happen to like Juju. I'm a fan of Juju. But Jacoby is a solid player, knows the system well. I would have, I would have kept uh, Jacoby. Yeah. Well, the Pats, let's talk about the Pats. The other team, they're making some moves, right? Juju, they're re-signing some guys. Big thing today that happened, Mike Kosecki for tight oh, end. You hear he's going up here to, uh, to us? Yeah, yeah. Mike Kosecki, the Patriots signed him. Oh, they already did. It's a done deal. Yeah, oh, 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 all right. Yeah. So I, I, I like Kaseki. You put Kaseki on the opposite side of um, Hunter Henry. Yeah, yeah. He's a nice tight end combo there. He, he's. Um, I hate to say this name, but he's your Aaron Hernandez to Hunter being a Gronk. Yeah. So, all right, all right. Let's try real quick as we wrap this up. This Aaron Rodgers freaking nightmare over the NFL. I mean. It, this is not a Brady leaving the Pats going to Tampa Bay thing because Brady was very humble on his way out the door. Rodgers is, as I've said many of the times, he's the Kyrie Irving of the NFL, right? Yeah, in a way. You could, that's a good analogy. And he does not shut up. And I just – the deal's not even done yet, right? I mean, Green Bay can hold them hostage because they want what they want. Yeah. Well, if you're Green Bay – do you do you hold the cards and say we're gonna we want this and we're not giving up on anything else as you give it? Potentially, but I, I think they're time that they're ready to part ways. I mean, I, I think the only two options for Rogers is to work a deal with the Jets or by the way, who have already signed Lazard. The yeah. Jets have signed Lazard, he's locked How in. How about that? He says, I want these five guys to come with me. What? Yeah, he's got Mercedes Lewis going there, he's got these other players going there. I, I think they'll get a deal done eventually. It's not official as of now. But right, right. that's the intentions. He wants to. If he doesn't go there, he's retiring. I think that's that's where where it mounts down to. But I I think the Jets. I think it was a bad move for the Jets. I think they're going to dump a ton of money. I short agree. Term, short term, it's not like the Bucks. Like when the Bucks did their move with Brady, the the NFC was still a little bit in flux, and you could like work your way through it, which you can today. I wouldn't be surprised if the Saints or the you know, the Niners and the Cowboys are probably yeah. your last of the NFC. But the Saints could creep their way in. The Lions could creep their – the NFC's wide open. Any team could win that thing, right? Great. Atlanta could freaking win a division and make it – They could. The they could. The AFC's different. The AFC, there's too many hurdles. 
you got to overcome first of all your own division with Buffalo and Miami, and, yeah. and who knows the Patriots may even be competitive, but Buffalo and Miami. You got Cincinnati. You got yeah. Baltimore. If Lamar stays there. Yeah. You got um, Kansas City and Mahomes, who is yeah. you know, you got That's the five. You're right. You got the Chargers with Herbert. You got Six. the Raiders, who you can't count them out with the talent Seven. they have there, right? I mean, Broncos, Broncos even eight, right? Broncos, we didn't even count the Steelers, and we, I mean, there's just too much. There's too much to get through in the AFC. To, to there's get. ten teams, right? They just said ten teams that could make the playoffs, and you only get what six in the playoffs, right? Yeah, there's only right. There's only six that make. Oh, well, seven now, right? Seven. seven, seven. That's right. That's right. Seven. Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, I, are they are they a top seven team with Rogers? I don't know. If Brees Hall stays healthy, he makes Garrett Wilson looks like the next Calvin Johnson. Yeah, yeah, maybe they they their offense is competitive enough to Sauce Gardner's a studded cornerback. I mean, they got some talent there. Yep. But there's so just so defensive line, they got talent. Yeah. I agree. There's, there's just so much to get through. So much yeah. to get through. Yeah. And and what if Rogers doesn't show up for uh preseason, like you know, offseason training? That's oh, and that's, that's a demotivator for the rest of the team. That that's not a way to go about it. Like because if you remember when Brady went to Tampa Bay, and by the way, it was during the COVID season, right? The first COVID, yeah. he got his boys showing up for off-season workouts in a, like a high school field or whatever, right? Right, right. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's a window now. It, you've got this little window for the Jets, and then when the window's done, they're going to be just like Tampa Bay. They're going to be back to ground zero and not even being able to compete with Carolina and Atlanta. I, I, I mean, Tampa could finish last. Carolina, Atlanta, and and the Saints could all finish ahead of Tampa this year, and and that's going to be the Jets in two years. So the Jets are like you and I right now. We're at we're at Las Vegas. We're on our, on our stag party. We got like a million black chips sitting in front of us. We say all in, and then all of a sudden it comes up like like numbers we don't even pick. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, oh man, all right. Nice show. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day, brother. Nice talking with you again. Got to refill it. Enjoy it. Thank you.